Some say there's nothing scarier than the truth. When it comes to true crime, people watching on TV and listening to podcasts just can't seem to turn away. Stephanie Rodriguez digs deeper into our obsession with crime scene stories. Crime is inescapable. It's at our front door and in our homes. Milwaukee police blocked off multiple areas. But why is crime also our entertainment? They have their theories, but they don't have any concrete answers. I think that evil fascinates people. You know, we really want to see and understand why people do these things that they do that we can't really understand. Understanding the why is one reason UW-Milwaukee Director of Psychology Dr. Stacy Nye says true crime original podcast. After the skeletal years after her dis listener discretion is advised. It's a popular genre. I think people are drawn to the puzzle. We love puzzles and someone can be an armchair detective and kind of figure out the who done it, then that's exciting to people. And I think people like to feel afraid um, in a controlled way. Like you were just saying, you love horror. So we can experience that, but we're not in danger when we're experiencing that. The amount of true crime entertainment seems endless. Alita Spang knew something was wrong. As soon From as podcasts to books to entire networks like Oxygen, Before the Court TV, and the aptly named True Crime Network. True Crime Network streaming. When the scripted series Dahmer, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, hit Netflix, Nielsen rating show it soared past the competition to the number one spot with 3.6 million minutes yeah. viewed. And I think true crime, people are intrigued by it and drawn to it because it really happened. Like they know these are real people, they were involved. This is a story that yeah. did happen. One of those real people involved is CBS 58's Jessup Ricebeck, featured in another Netflix release, The Hatchet-Wielding Hitchhiker. And as I'm doing this interview, there's a lot of stuff in local TV that you, you can't put on air. Swear words and stuff, yes, you can bleep, but there's some terrible things that happen to some people that you just can't talk about or, or put on local news. You can, you know, use your words to weave around it and give people a good sense of what happened, but. There's just some stuff, you know, that, that isn't uh, fit for um, TV. This one time, he tried to start a fire in his house. The information hours-long documentaries can provide may be more than viewers can get from the nightly news. That's another way that you can, you can delve deeper with a documentary. You also want to tell the true facts and, and what went into it and what went into people's decisions and stuff like that. These stories keep captivating audiences, showing them something out of the ordinary. You need a good story. It has to be a powerful event that happened. You have to have powerful and intriguing people involved and kind of good personalities and, and people that are, uh, you know, intriguing to watch. Other men were arrested in a police sting operation. The amount of content could lead you to think these crimes happen often, but Nye stresses viewers should remember the crimes aren't as common as they're portrayed. Like, really, serial killing is really rare. Most crime does not happen like that. Most crime is not murder, you know, so, so keeping in mind that we're seeing only this rare little excerpt, like plane crashes really aren't that common, you know, so when they happen, it's big news, and we might feel afraid of them, but it's really quite rare for those hey, things to happen. Welcome back to Outlaws and Scorned Women. The Often, these shows, depictions, dramatizations are about women and white women. And so it's, it's the tide is changing a bit now, but a lot of crime is against women of color, black women, indigenous women, and trans women. And so that hasn't been highlighted enough in the media. And so to keep in mind again that this is just, you know, pretty rare and there's so much more happening out there that we should be aware of. And Jennifer was in trouble. For women, there's a pull to true crime other than entertainment. On some level because of a basic survival instinct and there's some thoughts about watching in an attempt to prepare ourselves, to learn tips, to try to protect ourselves from these things happening to us. Now, I, I wanna go on record and say that, you know, there's a lot that we can't do and I'm in no way suggesting that if some people did it this way that they wouldn't have gotten hurt or killed, but I also think it's really important to trust your instincts. I can recall seeing it every time. While these shows provide people with a puzzle to solve and insight into someone's mind, they can also impact their mental health. 
Well, they can be triggering. This was the first homicide. So if you yourself have been a victim of crime, you might want to stay away from things like that because you would find depictions of, you know, violent acts really disturbing and triggering. So, um, so I, I do think that that's a real thing. If you're finding that watching all of these things, like you're not able to sleep at night, or you know, you're having nightmares, or you're now afraid to leave the house, those are signs that you should probably like back off the true crime a little bit. For scripted shows like Dahmer, Nye wants viewers to know artistic liberties are at play and to take their representation of mental health with a grain of salt. Most serial killers don't necessarily have like depression or anxiety or even psychotic disorders like schizophrenia. You know, they're, they're most often um, people with like antisocial personalities. So, um, so it's unfortunate that, you know, um, the mental health gets demonized in a lot of those shows. No matter the why, true crime stories are tantalizing tales many can't get enough of. The fascination with what are the events, what are the details, what, what's the evidence. We're still just drawn in by it, you know? It's like, it's like a train wreck, you know? We just can't turn away, I think. I just think that is very innate in many of us. It's a really interesting story, not completely.